Recreating an epic battle now on BBC Two with a team of vicars taking control. In time, commanders. A mighty Roman invasion force penetrates the dark, brooding forests of Germany. But hundreds of angry enemy tribesmen lurk in the trees, intent on slaughter. Will the Romans make it to safety? Or will their advance stop here in a bloody ambush? This week, a team of vicars, watched over by our military experts, find out on Time Commanders. Welcome to the show that can put you into the heat of battle anywhere in history. Ready for action tonight is a team of ministers from the south of England. Andy Caldwell worked as a lifeguard, a swimming teacher and a police officer in Hong Kong before entering into the ministry. I'd like the experts to look at our, our strategy and our tactics and I'd like them to be overwhelmed. I'd like to win this battle in a new way and a, and a better way that actually has them gobsmacked. Rob May has been canoeing in Arctic Scandinavia and can translate ancient Hebrew. It's going to be fascinating spending some time with the experts and to listen really carefully to the information they have to give us uh, as they give us some background uh, to the battle scene itself and to the historical context. Neil Durling hopes his wife and young daughter will see him win tonight. I think I might get a little heated at times if I feel I'm not being heard by the generals if I was a captain. Um, if I was a general it would be easier because I would be in charge. And Mark Redhouse is more likely to be seen wearing shades at the wheel of his sports car than in his vicarly robes. I think we obviously got a chance of winning. Um, I don't know whether in practice we will. If I win, I'll be delighted. If we lose, I won't be too upset. Together, this religious band are tonight's Time Commanders. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to have you on the show. I've got to ask, as ministers, what are you going to be able to bring to this? It is about fighting and stuff. Well, I think we uh, can be bold, we're good communicators, and I think actually we're a little bit aggressive. Really? Well, I mean, you have to be very aggressive. I'm just wondering how you're going to deal with the actual, well, a killing bit. We've all been in church meetings. <laughs> I think we can cope with it. They're rougher than I thought then, those <laughs> occasions. Um, excellent. Well, it will get bloody and tough out there. It is only a game. It won't feel like it when we get stuck into it. Good luck to you all. All I can say as advice is pay attention in the early stages because every bit of information you pick up will be valuable when the battle starts. And keeping a watchful eye over our ministers in battle today will be our experts. Historical analyst Eric Nussbacher, senior lecturer in war studies at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and historical expert and author Mark Urban. OK, team, now this is the bit where you get to be the congregation and let our experts do the talking, and it's very important that you stand and listen. Remember I said information is crucial. This next bit is, because here comes your battle briefing. You are going to fight the Battle of Teutoburger Forest. It is the year nine, and you are going to be fighting near Kalkrise Hill in what's now Germany, near the town of Osnabrück. The man that Rome has sent to this area is Publius Quintilius Varus. Now, Varus is somebody who's been off in the Middle East, crucifying people, subduing rebellions, and that's essentially his role here too. He's been sent in to, as the Romans would see it, pacify this unruly area. The Roman army that's coming to sort Germany out consists of the 17th, 18th and 19th legions. The Roman army is a highly organized combined arms force. They know that if they can get through the forest to the open ground on the other side, then the terrain will be much more favorable to their style of fighting. And you will take on the role of Varus, the commander of this Roman army. You've got three legions and those three legions consist primarily of the good old Roman infantry, armed with the throwing spear, the pilum, 
as well as with the short stabbing sword, the gladius, and they are armored with the segmented Roman armor. And you've also got some Numidian light horse, a long way from home, not wearing armor, but very, very good with that thrown javelin. The, uh, the Roman legion has as its main weapon its cohesion, its discipline, its ability to stay together in a set formation and cut into the enemy like a buzzsaw. In order to allow your legions to work properly, you need space. And this will be, for you, a fight for space. So our team of ministers will be going down to the woods today as the Romans for a mighty clash with those German warriors. Do you know what? It sounds terrifying, actually. How do you feel? Terrified. Good, good. It does sound like just the whole idea of woods and, of course, there will have been all those superstitions about it. It's going to be scary. Now, you do have an opportunity here because our experts are with us. You can ask two questions. Ask away. How do we stop ourselves getting bogged down in the woods? If you are an organized army in a reasonably compact formation and your enemy is vastly more numerous, they can flow around you. So you have to think about watching your flanks and watching your back. Are there any particular arms or armaments that we should really be aware of that the enemy are gonna throw at us that are gonna be very hard for us to counter? The main thing you've got to worry about is stuff that works well in woods. And that means you're going to be far more concerned with the enemy's speared men than you are about the enemy's cavalry. They have some cavalry, not going to be as big a problem in the woods because they can't get up momentum amongst the trees. I would look at it almost the other way round. The things that you have that could be a problem to the Germanic tribes. And that is that organization, many of your troops, your legionaries, with large shields and good armor, an ability if they stand shoulder to shoulder to resist pretty much anything that comes at them. Okay, well, that's it. No more questions to be asked, I'm afraid. You will be fighting the battle on your own. You actually do look quite scared there. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> right, next thing to do, and this is very, very important, there can only be two generals and two captains. You don't get to decide it, the experts do, they study your profiles and they make up their mind. And now is when we find out who will be doing what. Our top tactic is to use our, our best troops to sap down the enemy's morale, um, to have a, uh, a light force that will be good at uh, lightning fast strikes, but our key will be getting them in, getting them out very quickly. Andy, you will be a general. Excellent. Neil, you will be a captain. Excellent. Rob, you will also be a general. OK, thank you. And it doesn't take the brains of an archbishop to figure out that you will be a captain. Great. I think Andy will cope quite well, but uh, I think he wants us to win, so he'll be very focused. So while Neil and I um, start to smile, um, Andy will get very serious, I think. How do you reckon you're going to work as a team? I mean, we're expecting it to be peace and harmony and <laughs> cooperation. It's communication, I think. If we, as the captains, listen to what they tell us to do and don't get our own fancy ideas and they hear when we say that there are problems, then I think we should do OK. Well, we're going to have a skirmish before the big one. That's pretty authentic. A lot of battles started like that and it's good because it gives you a chance to practice, to get used to your new roles, to get your communication working as a team and to see how it all works. Once again, our experts will be briefing you and as always pay attention because their every word is important. You Romans are arrogant, but you Romans are competent. And that means that before you go into these deep dark woods, you're going to send out a reconnaissance party to decide whether you want to take the one path, the other path, or both through this forest. Now one of the good things about the skirmish is that you can use it as an opportunity to watch how the Germans come at you. They have all the advantage of being tribesmen, the ability literally to run rings around you in your compact organized formations. And the responses you take in terms of formation and how you conduct yourself 
could be the same as in all sorts of other periods of uh, military history. For example, how the British dealt with the Zulus. And that is it. That's the end of your information in your briefing. Mark, Eric, thank you very much. Our experts are going. You'll be fighting this on your own. They will be watching you from on high, which you're kind of used to, I suppose, really, chaps. And they will be critical. How are you feeling? Aggressive? Yep. yep. Really yes, good. Confident. What are you going to do? Well, we're just going to have a look and see the, the, the layout of the land, see where we encounter some force and just see what they do to us. Well, See how they scare us. They're going to scare you. It's going to get gruesome, but it'll be useful. Good luck. Be aggressive. Yeah. Let's have a fight. That's it. On you go. We're off march. The team is facing a fork in the road. And you can see they've got two paths ahead of them. They've got a big, wide track going off into that part of the forest, a little narrow track into that part of the forest. And you can already see groups of Germans on, in both tracks. So no matter which way this reconnaissance party goes, the team is going to find themselves in a scrap. And I think it's safe to assume that if there are Germans on the tracks, there's probably even more of them in the forest itself. And you can just imagine the trees echoing to the sound of their war cries, the so-called baritus. And some people describe this as sounding like waves crashing against cliffs. I've got two units, one cavalry and one, cav uh, one infantry. Andy, I've got a unit of archers and a unit of cavalry in front of those. OK, so two protect cavalry, them. one infantry, one archers total. OK, get them protected. Get As we protected. go up, you've got spearmen ahead. Don't the engage archers. the spearmen on a charge, because they've got huge spears. We're going to take these guys head on to see what they can do, and we're going to take them on the left. They're taking the left fork, so they've, they've grasped the essential point that they've got to take the, the broader the broader lane through the forest. What we've got is infantry, cavalry, cavalry, archers okay. in a line together. Uh, yeah, we've got to protect that left a little bit. Because look, can you see there, just coming out the woods? That looks like archers coming through the trees there. Yeah, it could just be a fiend attack. Let's go. Let's just go, because they've seen us. Let's go. Let's show them some force. Let's the show them what we're made of. We're under fire. Do a quick strike with cavalry to their archers. Very quick strike, in and out. Do not chase them into the woods. They go into the woods. Do not chase them. OK, stop. Turn round. Turn round. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm coming back, Rob. Hold my infantry. I think that was very good there. They chased off the German archers and missile troops with their cavalry. They chased them back into the forest, and then they immediately broke off with the Roman cavalry. They didn't take the bait to be drawn into that forest as the German archers melted away. So that was a very effective use of cavalry. What they've got to do now is keep going, follow it up, and they've, they've stalled somewhat. So that's a bit of a shame. They need to keep their infantry moving forward. Yeah, that's right. Because they're standing still, they're not achieving their objective, and they make a beautiful target. Let's give them another quick charge, but don't go into the woods. Should give I them another that, quick yeah, charge, right, and let's charge with my cavalry. Can you get Neil to do a quick yeah. sortie? Because they're getting Neil cavalry there. charge. Now, one of the tactics some of these Germans used, the more reckless ones, was to roll under the galloping cavalry horses and try and slice open their bellies. We're losing, you guys. Agony. Okay, infantry in. Your yep. cavalry is being butchered. They need to be thinking. Yeah, at those guys and the ones that shoot them. The There's a communication problem here. I don't think the captains, I don't want to be harsh, but I don't think the captains are doing what they're told. So we've got a second cavalry unit charging the other one. Use your cavalry ones. to go in and loose off with a load Which of Which ones? The ones on the right or the ones on the left? The ones on the left. These German tribes, they were big on what we would call psychological warfare. They had their chance, and they also used night attacks a lot to unnerve the Romans. 
painting themselves and their weapons black. They've got to guard their cavalry. Their cavalry has been shot to bits, and they're just, I mean, that's valuable, and it's been butchered. Now they lost cohesion. Off on the left, their cavalry is in trouble. And then over there, their legionaries are being absolutely cut to pieces by the Germans. Get your infantry, Rob. Where's Rob, the other infantry? Get the infantry to form up. Get well, you better form up quickly. Look what's coming up. your way. These Cherusky warriors, they were unarmored, and so they were much more nimble than the Roman legionaries. Mm -hmm. They're also going to have a problem here with the Roman archers. Firing into this melee, obviously, they'll be killing Roman troops as well as German ones. Here's a bunch of Germans coming up. They're coming up on the flank of that group of Romans. Yeah, they've lost a lot of cavalry. Looks like the Germans are trying to cut off the Romans' escape. There are tribesmen coming from every direction. Yeah, I think most of those Romans have been surrounded and they're going to die in a very unpleasant manner. Coming out of the trees, they're coming from everywhere. Hey, okay. We're getting slaughtered. Yeah, the Roman archers are legging it now, which means the legionaries left behind are just going to meet their fate. It's really just a case of mopping up for the. Uh... Oh, that's gruesome. And there, there go the Romans back to uh, back to tell Varus that something is afoot. I think you are really in trouble here, guys. Yeah, we are. Got Your archers are on the run. Right, back to the okay. table, quick, come on. Captains, leave your posts. We work working well. OK. We work Generals, well. captains, no. I think you're all saying the same thing. It's teamwork is key. You did get absolutely mm. pasted. <laughs> you were completely. Um, it started well, and we thought, ooh, this is looking good, but then you just fell apart. Yeah. You are going to have to get together on yeah. your teamwork, on your communication, mm -hmm. because the big one is on the way now. <laughs> oh, boy. These Padres have taken a serious pounding. And I have to hope that they learn from this, that they have got to figure out how to get through those woods. If they linger, then those German tribesmen are going to come out of the woods like dark spirits and take them to pieces. They've got to figure out how to crack on through these woods and get through to the open ground where they can fight like Romans. Obviously, ministers, you can't just steam into battle. You're going to need to make a plan. This is your time to do that. So, generals, this is your army. Captains, find out what you've got. Report back, tell your generals. Get down to your positions now. Use these few minutes Have a look as exactly well as you can. What you've got. Have a look at the battlefield, And generals. then, one at a time, don't start speaking until, until you've had a look and you understand. Rob, let's go and have a look at this. And keep so I've got seven units of legionnaires, and they're good with javelins and close combat. Yeah. If we all go up to the left-hand path... Yeah, we start keeping space here. Right. Uh, these are all the job yeah. yeah, but we're going to be on mass. The large Roman force is approaching the forest from the southwest in column formation. The first skirmish demonstrated that the enemy force is hostile. They're lying in wait in the trees ahead, but exactly what composition or what size this German force is, is unclear. In the heart of the forest is a wide clearing where the legions could fight in their preferred set-piece style. But to get there, they've got to decide once again whether to split the army or whether to just take one of those routes. After all of that talking, what's your plan? What are you going to do? Well, we want to learn from that skirmish where we got absolutely hammered. You did. We feel one of the mistakes we made, apart from our communication skills, one of our mistakes was that we didn't keep pushing. So as an attack, pushing. very briefly, you reckon it's going to be? We are going to try and keep pushing through. And we're going to push through and we're going to take the brunt of it with our legionnaires at the front. And they are going to do the hammering work and we're going to be trying to keep pushing on until we get to the end of the... The, the, the road there. We're going to keep our cavalry roughly on the sides to keep striking and maybe keep their wild barbarians in the woods. OK, guys, your planning time is up because this is it. It's autumn, 9 AD. Those terrifying Germans are waiting in the woods for the Romans. There is no way of escape. There's no space for manoeuvre and there's no room for error. Let battle commence. OK, let's go. Get over that. 
Okay, guys, legionnaires to the front. We don't know what the Germans are going to do, except that it's going to involve hiding in the trees. They're already moving. Oh, there they are. Do you see? Group of Germans already yeah. going in. I think one thing is sure is for certain, Eric. We, we can't expect them just to stand there at no, the end. No, they're bound not. to take up some sort of positions. And uh, I think, as you suggested, the the fact that the team are likely to take the broader path down makes it highly likely that the Germans deployed over there will have to move sharpish if they're going to play any role in the battle. So an attack on the team's right from through the forest seems highly likely fairly early on. If they ever get there. At the moment, they're just standing still. If you hang around, they will move. If you don't, they will. Neil, can you get moving, please? I, I've asked Get them. moving, yes. now. See archers in the trees, though. Yeah, there are archers in the trees right, on the right-hand side. Use your archers to shield them. Get moving. Can I Andy. fire one then with Legion my arms? Tight formation. Tight formation. Tight formation. Tight okay. formation. Andy is one fierce general. Poor Neil was really copying. Okay, let's get going. Come on. Now they're moving. Now the Romans did have local scouts, German scouts, but what they didn't know was that the leader of those, Arminius or Hermann, was the man secretly bringing together the revolt against Roman power, and he led the Roman general Varus's legions into a trap. You're under arrow fire, guys. Yeah, look at this. This is exactly what we didn't want to happen. So, OK. I'm waiting for Mark to use the screen. I don't want to hear that. I want you getting moving. Go. From the right, high on the right. There's arrows high on the right. What can I tap on? Where's these? Are these coming from behind? Let's get moving. That's looking good. I'm firing on them with archers. The Romans are barely into the woods, but already the Germans are putting in a little attack to draw the Romans in. So, what do we think? Well, I think it's fascinating, Richard, that the, uh, the whole sort of communication problem which showed itself on the skirmish has not been solved. They know it's a problem, but they're all shouting at one another. And the captains are answering back. Yeah, absolutely. And the generals are just bawling them out. And... Absolutely. Being bossy isn't enough, really. You've being got, very bossy. You've got to convince them that you've got a good plan. What I love about this is that Andy really knows what he wants to do. Oh, he does. And he's driving the rest of the team to achieve it. He is imposing his will on his team. But isn't the aggression all on the floor, not on the battlefield? Well, we'll find that out, won't we? Right, yeah. well, I'm going to get down there. See you in a bit. Neil, you need to continue to double time your troops. They're, they are such a gap. I don't want to see that gap. Just move them all on block. Well, I, think, I think the Vickers are moving forward nicely now, but the danger is here that these troops that deploy to deal with the threats on the flank will get left behind and picked off. Who's in charge of the ones at the back? You've got those guys, Neil. the stragglers at the back. They are going to get butchered. Right, Neil, you are going to get butchered. Do not worry about cohesion. Get it all together. I want everyone to get I just got Neil a real How it looks at the moment. Just get everyone together. I feel bad. If we just go in here, you'll see the Germans are coming through on the right, as we expected. And these men here on the Roman right really have to change face some of them at least, form a flank guard while you keep the main part of the column going. Here they come, out of the woods. Yeah, can I fire some archers into those? Let them have it. Yeah, we've got some slingers going in. Keep the cavalry Have a very quick yeah. cavalry attack on a wedge. Yeah, we've got our cavalry ready. Just keep them there. If they come out again, smack them one. Look at the door slamming shut there. The, the Germans there in red are coming in behind the Romans, and there is no chance for them to escape. Yeah, I think the Roman rear guard really is in a lot of danger now. Right, keep them up with the rest of the things. The door is closing. Yes, Ali Ayakta Est, as the pirate in Asterisk used to say, the die is cast. Run them, double time. German warriors who wanted to force themselves to be fiercer in battle would humiliate themselves by wearing a collar of bondage around their necks, as if to say, today I am a slave until I kill and make myself a free man. Right, 
Can the cavalry at least stand smart? Andy, shall I attack those ones with our cavalry that have got the archers at the moment? Yeah, back there. Quick burst. Give them what for. Hold on, Rob. In and out with those. Yes, I'm with you now, Rob. Get them up there quickly. Go. OK, right. Good, 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 good. Wedge formation. OK. We've shown them what we've made of. Shove off some javelins. I want back out again now. Yeah, good. Back good out going. again now, down Excellent. here. I think the team are doing quite well here. They've got themselves about a third of the way through the forest. Yeah, and they're still moving forward. But the German attacks are coming from every side now, again and again. A lot of cavalry there. Yes. But that's was costly. Cost to do in business though. Okay, and all of these back out again. Now these men need to about face, which is what they're trying to do. Take the attack. Those horses need to be moving. And these will catch the um, the Germans in the flank. But the Romans have an answer because they're in this boxed formation, manipular formation. What they can do if they're caught in the flank is that one of the follow-on blocks of legionaries can respond to that while the column as a whole keeps moving forward. Andy, do we just keep the legionaries marching? Keep the legionaries marching. Okay, team, this is a pause. Come on, let's go, my captain. It's going, it's going actually very well. It's okay. going very well. This is, they're starting to come up behind us now. Yeah. This, exactly. is, this, is, this is solid, but these guys are coming up behind us now. That's we've got, my cavalry we've got some loot, we've got some cavalry and some fairly loose stuff around yep. here, so we, we just need to be really careful. They Look, haven't yet met the German main body. No. But equally, their, their own casualties have been pretty light, so their own force is largely intact. I, I love what we're doing. I love what we're so doing. 30 seconds. So do you want me to pull out march. from attacking those no. guys back with my pull cavalry? No, pull out, pull out, and then get back into formation So you want my infantry going. back in now? No, I want, your arch I want your infantry to keep fighting for a minute until we get up a little bit and right. then come back in but and you're guard telling the back. But you came into yeah. these woods seeing the severed heads of their reconnaissance party nailed to the trees, and that has got to have unnerved them. But by now, they've seen that they can deal with these, these uh, scary German barbarians comparatively crisp. OK, and continue using your cavalry as you're using them. OK, here we go. OK, OK, keep going, Mark. Keep going. I want you to keep your troops going. I see a potential problem here. They've got two held up at the back, and a gap is beginning to open between this action that's happening at the back with all sorts of forces here stationary just waiting for the outcome and if we turn around we see the rest of the Roman force is moving forward and there is a gap opening up they're also under attack so I think some of the really good teamwork we saw before the pause has gone a bit. Okay, Andy, there's a unit on that left. They are running from the troops coming up behind them, running from the enemy, which might not be a bad idea, at least they get together if they turn and fight. They've been doing well so far. They're nearly halfway through the forest, but they're beginning to lose cohesion because of those constant German attacks. I've got some guys on the left-hand side, Andy, coming in. Let's do a lightning strike. A lightning strike, Neil, on the side to mark whoever can. Maybe something in the side there. It's all right. It's OK. If you've got troops that are not moving, are not engaged, get them moving, get them engaged. Move them. Keep them moving. Experts. And it looks like they've let themselves get split up into two separate And losing momentum as well. Part of the run. The, 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 the Germans have managed to halt the back. Um, and there are dangers. They've really got to get these people Otherwise, they'll just they'll get Are surrounded. These dead? Yeah, no, that's one well, just Roman them. cohort oh, that's holding off. What are they? Oh, they're stuck in. And you can see. Look at this. You can see. Of had course, it. the Germans will then just come in and yeah, surround they, they these can't guys. Win they them. are going to be the lost patrol. Is it true, by the way, that the Germans used to have their wives and women folk at the back like cheerleaders? Well, not like cheerleaders, they used to have their wives and women folk with them because they moved in family groups. Oh. When the tribe went to war, the whole tribe went to war. No pom-poms then. The women were not there with pom-poms, they were there with knives to cut the fingers off of dead Roman soldiers to get their rings. 
And hopefully just the fingers. I wish I hadn't asked now. <laughs> OK, now listen. Andy, Hold on, Rob. Wait, wait. Guys. As soon as they start fleeing, they start moving forward. Rob, over to you. OK, so you've got, you've got your units way at the front here. That's all right, though. We're all dead. Yeah, you may need to just stop for a minute, let everybody catch up. Andy, my guys at the back, my guys at the back have died, but they've kept them back, so I think we'd be OK. Keep moving forward. Moving forward. The furthest type, Mark. Your furthest troops, I want you to start holding those and start forming up. So what are okay. these? Now, these German tribesmen, they worked themselves up into a frenzy. They were berserkers. And this was all a way of getting the adrenaline flowing. Yeah, and they're using these big two-handed weapons, two-handed swords, two-handed axes that let them put the strength of both arms into a blow. And if they got you, well, as some of the archaeologists have found, skulls cloven in two and people with whole limbs just chopped off. Germans are in really good order. They're and following they're, up, and it seems to me, let me just double check this, okay. that they have actually managed to dispense with that last the Roman, rear guard. Roman rear guard that was left behind there. They're pretty much all dead now. So the Roman rear guard is gone. Few survivors coming back. And, and some German cavalry doing some mopping up. Yeah. But the, the difficulty is that as the team are moving closer and closer towards the holy grail of that open field at the end, bodies of Germans are starting to loiter menacingly in their rear. If you look further down the path that they're, well, failing to charge along at the moment, there's a less than pleasant surprise awaiting them at the end. Keep going. And are you happy? Yeah, I think so. Let's see. Is there anything we could be doing with our javelin? Highlight the woman. Okay, you have a brief pause. You can gather your thoughts. This destroys the momentum. Um, yeah, but we might be getting a bit hammered at the back. Here. Have yeah. a quick look and see what's... Actually, we're doing good. No, yeah, it's just this. They're coming okay. out again. They, they've got more units ready. To they are three quarters of the way there, aren't they? At the head of the column, anyway. The head of their column is, they can, to some extent, right off the tail of the column, as long as they've got somebody left to fight those Germans at the other end. You're a ruthless man, Eric. If an omelette needed making, I'm the man break to break the, the, eggs. the eggs. Yes, that's yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got it's stamina right behind marks, mm -hmm. but I want two lots of legionnaires just to defend us. Five back. seconds. I do not want to see any yeah, troops standing still. No, my Ready, guys? Here we go. Okay, go. Right. Mark, my legionnaires to defend. No me. troops. I want Sorry. to see standing okay. still. I we want the others to come up, don't we? These, I need to be up the side there. The cavalry. Where are my cavalry? Right, they want okay, one go on, Mark, here. you oh, get going. How many Listen to me. Get going. Well, they've certainly come out of that second pause with the right intentions, I think, to force their way forward, looking at the head of the column here, towards the big German army that awaits them on the open plain. I think if they get there and they're reasonably compact, they'll dispense with those Germans pretty quickly because the Germans ultimately are tribal warriors. They won't stand in the face of the Roman legions. My legionnaires now at the front. Yeah. What are these horses doing standing? Get those up. I want them up in the middle. Okay, two on. units behind and two our left are not moving at the moment, so they're standing. Come on, guys, get them moving. We've got a group of legionnaires. The cavalry Andy. are going. You can pull those um, legionnaires back now. Do you want all of my Andy. legionnaires now at the front? Because you said you wanted two. I want two at the back. Right, and the other a one. Andy, Andy. Oh, only one person at a time. Right, me. Andy, yeah. I've won at the back, so I'm now moving my legionnaires up, yeah? OK, I've good. Finished. OK. Good. Well done. We've keep won our up. first bit. Side, please. Okay. We've won our first bit, so we're going to keep going. Neil, after he'd been given a real shouting out by Andy, said, bless him. Right, the Roman rear guard has seen off a whole series of attacks, but the back end of the Roman army is now secure. No, it's not, is it? Come on, Where's guys, that's good. That's brilliant. Let's Double smash them. I think, listening to Andy saying, that's good, let's smash him. I'm thinking he's born a century too late. He really should have been sent out for some evangelical work in darkest Africa or somewhere. Fighting, okay, pr fighting priests. Fighting priests, yeah, exactly. Right. Come on, bring those cavalry and generals up. Anything. Anything. They're, they're running, they're running away. Yeah. The cavalry like, running away. I want all of them up the side sure there. Going through the trees, um, yeah. We are now going to see the battle open on the plain. The final phase, really, for the Roman army. But, um, but, but now they're on the ground that they're best at. Yeah. I mean, this close order German body here could take some beating, but I think that the legionary's superior discipline and formation should tell. 
<laughs> the Germans they've already met will have been the, the Germans who needed to prove themselves. The ones who had still got the full beards on their faces and who would not be permitted to shave them off until they'd washed their weapons in blood. So they've already faced possibly the toughest part of the German army, the most desperate part. The Air Force. Let's just scare them from every way. And I want to cavalry. Throw spears first. Uh, yeah, throw spears first. Are you doing double time, Mark? I'm doubling now. Go. Good man. Good man. My cavalry, cavalry are coming in from the side. side. From the side. Oh. Mark, oh. have you got your cavalry coming in from the other yeah, side? Got four go. Keep going. Now look at those Roman pillar going in. They had uh, a range of about 15 meters, and they had an iron point, a soft iron point that bent on impact, so you couldn't throw it back, and it would stick into your shield and fix you in place. Let's see what the rest of the Roman army is. Yeah. Oh, there are plenty of, plenty of Romans They're coming there. up, they're coming up, and they need to move them up and onto the flank of those German troops that they pinned. Essentially, the German army is now going to be fed into a power saw. The Romans will just keep hacking away, moving up to fill in the blank files until the Germans are all dead. Yeah, it's a bratwurst and sauerkraut omelette that they're making there. Come on, just hang in. Come on, next light in. Just hammer them. They can't go on for long, these guys. Can we have, listen in, I need some Andy, troops in Andy. the side. What listen in, I need they? troops hammering from the side. If there's any troops standing still, move them. Ah, oh, this is it. Ah, uh, there they go. This body of troops is being moved around to the left, hammering from the side, as Andy said. That's what you want to do. You've pinned them at the front. You now want to attack them from the flank, or better still, the rear. Are you out on the left here not, not not Are not they the generals? They're the generals. Right, and these the unit Commit the generals! <laughs> Commit the generals! Our team is brimming with confidence now. The Vickers are sending the general in. Yeah, I think victory is within their grasp now. Okay, okay, hit them again, hit them again. This is superb! Don't mess with the vicar. Fierce. Yeah, it's brilliant. Keep that going, it's brilliant. Okay, turn around again. Turn around again. No. Okay. Now look at this. The religionaries going in here. You see the way, you see the way. Squeezing, squeezing that German line. That's right. Attacking from the flank and rear, using the gladius, the stabbing sword. That's good practice. And we can see some Germans beginning to break and run. They can't really take this pressure from the front and flanks, and they're beginning to run. Let's have a look at the, uh, the German women, see what they're up to. The Haradans. Oh. They are they're, they're shrieking cool. away in the most unrestrained and Wagnerian fashion. If only they had horns on their helmets. And now the team are about to find out how fierce these Fräuleins are. I'm going to smash the cheerleaders. I'm smashing the cheerleaders. They're girls with axes. Right, we're going to keep going. Neil just bellowed. They're women. Keep going. Won't say what Andy said. Get into them. Go. Keep moving. Don't waste your time fighting the women. You've got to move on. Get moving. Andy is a bloodthirsty commander. He's got the right ideas, that's for sure. They're forming up again. Right, keep going. They Follow them now. On. Okay, they're keep running here. Oh, they're running away. Away. I want them keep to attack here. Keep moving. Do you want right, keep moving up the field. I don't want him in the woods. Neil, be quiet for a minute and you work it out with Mark. I think, I think they've won it, really. Oh, and the women are leaving the they've field as well now. The, the team have won it. I think there's no way they can lose we now. Split all the bears okay. off. We need to split everyone together. Okay, pull everyone together in this out. Get Put everyone in together in this open Get space. In the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good idea. I'm going to form up behind Mark, okay? Form That's what up behind Mark. at the front. A team are setting up there, and they've lost a lot of troops. But I think the end is in sight now. You are victorious. <laughs> that was a really good clean win by the Padres. Hey, good one, man. Well done, Steve. Well done. Thanks, yeah, thanks, 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 guys. Back to your positions, gentlemen. Come back round the table. <laughs>
What a Bring fight! On. Bring on the British Army. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm pleased or slightly scared, actually, by that. <laughs> that was fabulous. There were points in there where it was textbook stuff. Uh, we'll find out what our experts thought about it, but what do you think? What do you think? I think yeah, we, did, I mean, we did fine. We had a plan, we stuck to the plan. It was based on a keep the infantry tight, march them through, relentless, keep push them back as they came at us and overwhelm them. We destroyed their morale in the end. So if there's one key to your success there, what is it? We Andy. just kept moving. Andy it was, was Andy. Great. Andy. After Andy all the us. flack you took from well, him, Neil, you're going to say, oh, tar. he's always that. <laughs> <laughs> but he led us really well. He knows well. what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Which is great. Well, let's see what our experts made of your efforts. Eric, Mark, what do you think, then, of our ministers? I think that uh, there are going to be a lot of last rites administered. <laughs> 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 That's right. Uh, they, they did famously, and interestingly, you lost a lot of your cavalry mm. in the process. The cavalry were allies, they were Germans and not Romans. So, being ruthless Romans, you don't care, do you? You managed to go out there, you managed to s decide what your aim was, Andy, you selected your aim, you maintained your aim, you imposed your will oh, on your team. Oh, he did that. <laughs> he did that. <laughs> and through that, you imposed your will on the, uh, on the battlefield. Yeah, it was scary, Andy. You were ruthless, you were bludgeoning, you were relentless. But then having sorted the captains, you thought about the enemy. <laughs> and uh, it was impressive. And you, you took the pointer about a kind of box formation, that it just meant that wherever the Germans went in on you, you could always get them in the flank. So can you show us what actually happened then in the real battle? Of course. See how this differs from your brutal attack. So Quintilius Varus has got three legions and he's marching them up this road. He's got the 17th, he's got the 18th, and he's got the 19th. He's got lots of this auxiliary cavalry and he's using them out on the flanks, as you guys did. And the problem is that his auxiliary cavalry and his auxiliary scouts are Germans. But fortunately, they're from a very loyal tribe, the Cheruski, led by their leader, Arminius. So they are gonna move through in these great big legionary blocks with their trusted allies looking out for their flanks on either side. The big threat is not necessarily so much from some unknown quantity, which is what their general is worried about, some vague idea of a German rebellion out there. Instead, he, what he's got to worry about is his own scouts, the ones who have chosen this road, the ones who have told him this is the safe place to come. Now, what do the Germans do at this point? They do exactly what the Finns did to the Russians in 1940. They chop each block of Romans off from the one in front and behind it. They isolate them and then they move in and start killing them. And the killing, because they are German tribesmen, isn't a quick business. Some accounts suggest it went on for two or three days, attacking, retreating, attacking, retreating. Each time a few javelins or arrows in, a few more Romans worn down. The Roman morale, knowing they've been isolated in these pockets, dropping with each nightfall, uh, and in the end, of course, leading to them being completely overwhelmed. So, guys, it seems you did actually manage to turn history around. Experts, Eric, Mark, thank you very much indeed for your advice and help. And team, that was absolutely fantastic. A really tremendous fight. Very exciting stuff. You've been watching Time Commanders. So terrible was this defeat that Rome retired the numbers 17, 18 and 19 for their legions and never used them again. But Teutobergewalt established the Rhine as the border between Germans and Romans. This division still exists between Latin France and the Germanic countries east of the old border. Saving our architectural heritage, Summit Bowes meets a man who's turned a loo into a restaurant and visits a historic building being turned into a holiday home. Restoration Nation over on BBC4 in five minutes.